upbeat quarter. Uh, this is a business line, Friday, uh, August 18, and please listen to it as at 2x speed. Upbeat quarter, I mean, the first article is on upbeat quarter, which is which tells about India Inc's posting a uh, big Q1 profit, but sales are slowing down. Uh, the next is on 25 years of data protection and, and the history around it. The third one is importance of mental health in the academic world. The fourth is a supportive role of family mother-in-laws. Fifth is uh, tomato prices, uh, which can be stabilized and how the government should act on it. And the last one is hedging for managing energy prices through derivatives and other processes. So I'll quickly give the summary of it. Uh, just a moment. So India Inc, the first one, uh, India Inc, a surprise analyst by reporting strong profit growth for the April, June 23 earnings season. An analysis of 1,505 listed companies showed a year-on-year -year profit growth of 50.3% in quarter one of FY24, driven by both banking sector and non-BFSI companies. The banking sector saw 62% profit growth due to a credit boom and reduced bad loans. Non-BFSI firms achieved a healthy 44.8% profit growth aided by raising operating profit margin. Now, despite global economic slowdown, domestic sectors like oil marketing and cement benefited from lowered industrial input prices. The government, the report suggests that the recent stock market gains are grounded in fundamentals. However, there are divergent trends like consumer demand is slowing while industrial sales are rising due to government-led infrastructure spending. India Inc.'s debt servicing remains strong, implying a potential for increased private investment. Now, policymakers must focus on growing disposable incomes and controlling inflation to support economic growth. That's the first article. Uh, the next one is on data protection. And we, I mean, it's a fantastic article which talks how the law evolved over 25 years. Uh, the legislative intent appeal with TTSAT, which is the Telecom Dispute Settlement and Appellate Tribunal. Uh, what are the act act is done and what are the actions ahead and the way forward for this act uh, the dpda which is the digital Protect, personal Protect, data protection act was approved by the president after a long journey that began in the 20th century the process started in 1998 with the information technology act plan which and went through various stages including the creation of information technology act in 2000 and the formation of unique identification authority of india in 2009 the DPDA focuses on digital personal data protection, addressing privacy concerns raised by the Supreme Court. The legislation's legislative intent is derived from its accompanying statements. The DPDA structure includes the Data Protection Board of India and appeals through the Data Telecom Dispute Settlement and Appellate Termin Tribunal. Administrative notifications are still needed and concerns about exemptions and legitimate use of data persists. The DPDA is seen as a necessary step for a resilient digital ecosystem accompanied by cybersecurity strategies, surveillance reforms, and a framework for non-personal data. Mental health in academic institutions, higher education institutions. We'll skip this one. I mean, one can go through it. It's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of suggestion. Then new mother-in-law, I mean, how family is supporting. Again, we can skip through this one. Uh, empathy and all be interesting uh, tomato prices can be stabilized uh, so over here tomato prices have surged uh, surpassing apple prices due to reduced arrival and heavy rains leading to supply shortage now farmers had previously faced a low price and decreased their tomato cultivation which contributed to the price increase now economists suggest measures like cold storage and tomato processing to mitigate price volatility However, these solutions have limitation due to the changing supply dynamics and consumer preference for this produce, for fresh produce. Uh, vegetable farmers have been allowed to sell outside agricultural produce market committees yards since 2010, but this market liberalization did not lead to better competition or policies. The government's sporadic market intervention and further distorted, which have further distorted the prices to achieve Price stability, regulations for price discovery and volatility management are needed in agricultural market. The proposal suggests introducing bargaining council to ensure fair prices for farmers and prevent traders from controlling prices. These councils would negotiate reserve price with buyers and facilitate discussions between farmers and buyers. The goal is to balance the bargaining power of farmers and create a system that benefits both farmers and consumers, potentially doubling farmers' income by allowing them to retain more of the consumer price. 
Next is uh, Hedging Vital for Managing Energy Price Risk, also a very good article. So India's heavy reliance on energy imports, both natural gas and crude oil, due to the energy intensive economic growth, has led to the cascading impact of oil and gas prices on various industries and rising domestic inflation. Previously, businesses could manage fluctuations in commodity prices through supply contracts or by passing costs to the customers, but technological advancement and transparency have made such methods less effective. In response to these changes, energy intensive industries need to evolve and manage energy price risk through efficient hedging and using exchange traded derivatives for crude oil and natural gas. This helps maintain profit margins and protect against unpredictable operation costs. Now, energy intensive sectors like forging, glass, transportation, cement, natural gas, oil refineries, automobiles, and are more particularly vulnerable to these exposure to price fluctuations. Hedging against commodity price risks works best when it when integrated uh, when integrated into a comprehensive risk management program considering various margin drivers alongside feedstock prices long-term fixed price arrangement value chain expansion and commodity derivatives are effective strategies now organizations should also incorporate sales and operation planning to coordinate sales and purchase efforts while integrating price risks and hedging processes regulatory steps like sebi like regulations encourage commodity price risk management and the adoption of NDAs promotes comprehensive risk disclosure and economically sustainable hedging practice amongst corporates.